Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our first Sunday of Advent here at Port Elgin United Church. We're really glad you're here. I'm Reverend Heather McCarroll, and we have Brenda Manderson back from her holidays to lead us through our music. But we have a special surprise today because those who are running our AV booth, Dave and Maria, are also going to be singing our first hymn as well today. And so we thank you for that. And we have with us today our scripture reader, which is Penny Inkster, who has come prepared to share the scriptures. I do have a few announcements I need to share with you today. This will be our last in-person worship at Port Elgin United Church. It is Sunday, November 29th. Uh, due to the higher number of COVID cases in the area, it has been decided by council, and wisely so, that to keep each of us safe, we will cease from in-person worship for a while. We're hoping it's not a long while. A lot of it depends on us and how we are at keeping the case count down. And so there's something I want to say about this. We have been doing in-person worship now for two months. And every Sunday for two months, there are three individuals who have been showing up here early, making sure the doors were unlocked, all of the right paperwork was in place, all the protocols were being followed, and everyone was sitting within the right amount of meters from each other. Not an easy task to do. And so I would really like to thank Mary and Kelly, Louise and Jack Harry for being here every week and helping us. We could not have done in person without you. So thank you for doing that for us. Um, the other announcement I have was first from myself and my husband, Doug. We'd like to thank, there were so many of you who extended condolences on behalf of my father-in-law's death, and we thank you for that. We, uh, I have never received online condolences at the funeral home before. I can't tell you when I went on there and saw how many PEUC folks had done that, what it meant to us, especially when we're down in Waterloo and we were amongst a lot of strangers. And when we saw that, I thank you. I thank you for the flowers, the cards, and the emails. Boy, you know, it really felt something special since I've hardly got a chance to meet most of you. Um, next Sunday, we are going to do communion. So while you're watching, before you come up to your computer or the TV, have with you a glass of juice, or some of you sent me photos last time. That's fine. Have a glass of wine first thing on a Sunday morning but make it a little glass of wine and have your bread handy. And we will share in an Advent um, communion next Sunday in our short liturgy. And so now we will honor the land in which we meet. Here we gather on land that has been occupied for centuries. Long before it was claimed to be a united church, this land was the traditional territory of the Saugeen Ojibwa Nation, the collective of the Chippewas of Saugeen First Nation, and the Chippewas of Nawash unceded First Nation. We thank those who cared for this land before us and we pledge to work as partners as we move into the future. And so I changed up the order of worship, so I'm kind of scrambling here. So I also asked you in the Friday file to have a candle ready because we are now going to light our first candle. And we thought it'd be nice if you folks could light one at home as well. And I know some of you live where you're not allowed to have open flames. So those battery run ones are just as good. So we light one candle for hope because the world is broken and the waiting is long. But hope just won't let go. Hope holds a space for all our longings. It lingers on the edge of harsh reality like the dawn gently awakening the sky. Keep awake, she whispers, for the world is being made new. So we light one candle because it only takes one candle. And this week we light the candle of hope. Christ is with us. Amen. Give us hope for the world while we're waiting. Give us hope for ourselves, we pray. Give us hope for your love and your healing. Give us hope for a brand new day. Light a candle, light a candle, light a candle while we wait and pray. Light a candle. 
Christmas Day. Today's scripture reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In this passage, an angel visits Mary and foretells the birth of Jesus. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Fear not, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come to you, and the powers of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she, who was said to have been unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. This be, then the angel left her. May we bless by today's reading. May we bless by today's reading of God's holy word.
Thank you, Maria and Dave. I also am sorry that I forgot during the announcements to thank the decorating committee. This sanctuary is absolutely beautiful and it adds so much to our sense of being in a new season here in the church. I have a question to start with today. Have you ever noticed how many times in the story of the nativity that we are told to fear not? Yeah a major theme throughout the story. First, there was Zachariah, who was told by the angel to fear not. After waiting and waiting for the birth of a child, this angel was basically saying to Zachariah, you will not be disappointed. The fulfillment of your prayers is coming. And Mary was a young, unmarried woman, and she was being told that she was going to have a baby, and to fear not for what it was that God was calling her into. And Mary's fiancé, Joseph, he was a man of high morals, and he was greatly respected. And now he was caught in a conflict between what he had been taught was right and respectful and what God was calling him into, and this was going to put him in conflict with his family, with his community, with himself. But he was told to don't be afraid. Take Mary and the baby as your own. Don't be afraid to be judged and rejected. Don't be afraid of what others will say. And then there were the lowly shepherds out in the fields. Now these shepherds had absolutely no influence in Bethlehem. If they were to walk through Bethlehem, people would just ignore them. They were not people of any influence, people that would often be ignored and probably uh, they wouldn't even try to engage in conversation. And yet this, not one, but this whole flock of angels come and say to them, do not be afraid to go and share the story of what we are telling you. Don't be afraid to go and talk about the birth of Jesus. We have called you to be the messengers. Do not be afraid. 2,000 years later, we gather here on Advent of 2020, a monumental year. And we come with fears of our own, perhaps the same kind of fears. Disappointment, embarrassment, family conflict, stress, not having any influence. Fear of the pandemic and the isolation and loneliness that it brings. Fears of what it means to spend Christmas without family. That's why the message of the Christmas angels is especially important to us today during this first advent of 2020. You see, all the fear knots of the Bible, they're actually true blessings because they teach us about God's presence, empathy, guidance, wisdom, and new beginnings that are offered to each and every one of us. Did you know that there are actually 365 fear knots in the Bible? Exactly enough for one for every day of the year. I think it's a pretty big message that they're trying to get out to us. Now this Advent season, we will visit with the biblical characters of that very first Advent. And we will meet up with folks who have every reason to be full of fear. And they're going to teach us how to walk in faith instead. So today we're going to ponder the story of 12-year-old Mary. She was visited by an angel, and the, and the angel announced startling news that Mary was to bear a son. Now we might well imagine that as this angel has come to Mary and starts making this long proclamation, at one point she nervously puts her hand up, yeah, but... but but I have a question. How can this be so? Because I'm still a virgin. So then the angel goes on to explain that her cousin Elizabeth is pregnant in her old age. And we hear Mary speak again, and this time it's not a question. 
This is really powerful because what Mary says next is, here I am, a servant of the Lord. Let it be according with you. let it be with me according to your word. In fact, this response has become very famous, and all of you know a song that actually this very phrase goes on and on. You know the song I mean? Let it be by the Beatles. This week I purposely went to YouTube and I hit the link and I listened to it, and you know that song brought in all new meaning for me. Let it be is exactly what Mary's message is to us today. And if you have time today or after you watch this video, go to YouTube and watch Let It Be by the Beatles. But one of the most intriguing things about this story is how Mary goes from asking, how can this be, to saying, let it be. I mean, the story makes it sound like there was actually literally minutes or seconds between her change of heart. But I wonder how long it really took for Mary, for her parents, for her friends, for the community. I mean, how many can think of a time when they've had to move from how can this be to let it be? It may have been the news of tragedy, the uprising of conflict, the reality of illness or sickness, betrayal in a relationship, broken dreams, or an unexpected pregnancy. How can it be? I mean, that's a question that we by nature ask when we find ourselves in the wilderness places of life. How can this be? And I suspect I'm not the only one who has asked, how can this be several times during this pandemic? Times when the COVID case count seemed absolutely unimaginable, not only locally, but not even in our country, but globally. Or even worse, the death count was, has been heartbreaking. I mean, how can this be? And when we think about spending Christmas without family, without our usual traditions, without singing Silent Night in church on Christmas Eve, oh, I see a few heads nodding. How can this be? And so we have to find our way, like Mary, to say, well, let it be. And I'm not suggesting that getting it, that it's easy or that it's quick, but it's important. Because to linger in disappointment, to linger in anger, to linger in frustration or anxiety can destroy your life. It will destroy your life, guaranteed. And I'm also not suggesting that let it be means a passive, hands up in the air, I give up response. Let it be is hard work. Getting to let it be means that you have worked through the situation to the point of accepting the new reality, a new path forward, and trusting that it'll be okay. And I think Mary shows us beautifully the journey to let it be. See, she doesn't avoid the storm that lies ahead. Instead, she enters right into the eye of the storm, allowing the chaos, the emotion, the relationships, and the circumstances to swirl all around her. It's not by accident that God chose this 12-year-old girl. And she does this by depending on God to lead her through the storm. You see, in this sacred story, we hear Mary say, let it be with me according to your word. It's not about seeking a solution or about fixing it, but instead wrapping yourself up in the love of God and those that love you that are around you. In the center of the storm, we have to trust that God is in the journey to the unknown with us, that we do not journey alone. And it is also really important in the eye of the storm that we remember that we have others to journey with us as well. As we journey through this COVID storm, we're not alone and it. it's not just happening to me, it's not just happening to you. We all are having this collective experience. It's really important we remember that, that so we can be a support and that we can help each other move to the let it be. And out of Mary's story, we see confidence amidst a crisis that is the mark of maturity and faith. In fact, I go so far and say that it's the mark of a faith of maturity or maturity of faith. It takes great faith to respond the way that Mary has. Her proclamation, let it be, it is not a passive response. 
It is a response of trust. She, and this is the most important part, she heard the deep meaning of do not be afraid. It is an angel assurance that is a message from God, one that transcends time. It is a message of assurance that through the wilderness or in the middle of chaos and confusion, along the journey, we are not alone. It is the sense of God with us. And that is the profound message of what Christmas is all about. It is the journey that we take through Advent to the message that God is with us. And nothing should take that away from you, nothing. That should be the foundation on which we stand as Christians. Whether COVID is here or not, whether we can have our family with us or we gather to sing Holy Night, Silent Night or not, we as people of faith know that Christmas's profound message is to fear not, for God is with us. And I think more now than ever, it is upon us to live that faith and be that light in this world right now. In the way we talk to each other, the way we talk about each other, in our presence. Even in the stores, I think our calm, faith-filled presence should make a difference. See, the love and the hope was known upon that midnight clear centuries ago, and it continues to echo through the universe. And may you be calm enough and open enough this Advent season that you will feel this within your own soul, this hope and this call, and may it be so. And let us share in a time of prayer. Well, dear most holy God, for you, absolutely nothing is impossible. Through a poor young woman in a small town, you gave birth to your realm of endless glory. And by your Holy Spirit, fill us with new life and hope and overshadow us with your power and grace so that we, like Mary, might be your servants. Saying, let it be so and bearing witness to the promise of your word. We pray today for those who are the frontline workers. We pray for those that are working the COVID um, testing sites who put themselves in danger with every shift. We ask that you protect them and keep them safe. We pray for the doctors, the nurses, the school teachers, those who are working in the grocery stores and the Tim Hortons. Protect them through this storm and protect us. We pray for those who are in hospital, those who are upon waiting surgeries, or those who are ill. May they feel your healing touch. We know the world is brimming with anxiety. We pray that your hope and your peace may be a calming balm for all that is happening. And may you empower each of us to be your light and your love. This we pray to you through Jesus Christ. Amen.
so today we do take up a moment for the offering. And so I ask for you to please stand if you're able. Our hope is expressed in the ministry of this church where God's children can learn to walk the way of Jesus, the paths of God. And we give our gifts today in hope for the future and in gratitude for what has been and is still continuing in our ministry here and through your lives. So let us gather our gifts together and we'll present them as an offering. We give you but a And we thank you, gracious God, for giving us an opportunity to bring tidings of hope to our neighbors through these offerings and through our lives. Amen. Please be seated. And we'll now join in our last hymn, There is a Voice in the Wilderness, verses 1 and 3. There's a voice in the wilderness crying, a call from the ways untrod. Prepare in the desert a highway, a highway for our God. The valley shall be exalted, the lofty hills brought low. Make straight all the crooked places. So as we end our time of worship today, go back into your week knowing that you are loved perfectly, saved eternally, and empowered as a disciple of Jesus Christ to share God's hope with everyone you meet. Amen. Hope is a star that shines in the strong. 